best wishes to everyone this is dr srija from guntur andhra pradesh practicing as a nephrologist and renal transplant physician at manipal hospitals vijayawada let us discuss a very important topic today pertaining to chronic kidney disease patients so first of all what do you mean by chronic kidney disease chronic kidney disease is a slow continuous irreversible loss of functioning nephrons and this ultimately leads to end stage renal disease the chronic kidney disease can be described under five headings depending upon the estimated glomerular filtration rate as the functioning nephrons decrease in number the glomerular filtration rate decreases so chronic kidney disease stage 2 is 6290 ml per minute per 1.73 meter square of gfr stage 3 is 3260 ml per minute per 1.73 meter square stage 4 is 15 to 30 ml per minute per 1.73 meter square stage 5 or end stage renal disease is a stage where initiation of renal replacement therapy is inevitable that is the glomerular filtration rate is less than 15 ml per minute per 1.73 meter square of body surface area so these are the various stages of chronic kidney disease why this staging is important this staging is important because as the chronic kidney disease progresses from one stage to another the patient will develop various clinical complications as the disease progresses from one stage to another second thing is in order to identify a particular patient who is at risk of acute deterioration in his renal function say for example a hospitalized patient who is required to undergo Uh, contrast studies who is required to receive antibiotics or, or who is required to undergo surgery so depending upon this staging or calculating the estimated glomerular filtration rate we can further stratify the risk category of the patient so as a chronic kidney disease progresses from one stage to another the various symptoms develop in a particular patient the symptoms are attributable to each and every system in the human body say for example if you take the central nervous system the patient may lose his concentration the patient may have reduced attention span that is not able to concentrate loss of memory and as the disease progresses the patient may develop altered sensorium seizures and if you take the cardiovascular system the patient may develop fluid around the heart the patients may develop shortness of breath easy fatigability if we see the gastrointestinal system the patient will develop aversion to food loss of taste sensation nausea vomitings constipation sometimes bleeding per rectum and the patients usually have blood pressure on the higher side and most importantly they tend to develop a fluid overload state which is evident in the form of pedal edema or edema around the eyes that is a facial puffiness or periorbital puffiness so coming to the most important symptom or a sign the pedal edema so usually the patients will complaining will complain of uh swelling in around their ankles or swelling in the feet swelling around their eyes or facial puffiness in the early stages as the disease progresses they tend to develop a generalized body swelling that is accumulation of water in each and every compartment of the body which we call it as anasarca 
and further as the disease progresses they will tend to develop a accumulation of fluid in the lungs which ultimately leads to a state of severe breathlessness there is a pulmonary edema where we have to administer intravenous diuretics or non invasive ventilation or in severe cases we may have to initiate renal replacement therapy so what are the causes for this edema this edema can be because of two things say for example if you take a patient who is losing large amounts of protein in the urine that is a proteinuria in case of some glomerular diseases the patients may lose nearly 5 to 8 grams of proteins in their urine so their serum albumin levels will be decreased this is the albumin which is lost in the urine and the albumin usually contributes to the uh, oncotic pressure which retains the fluid in the intravascular compartment so once this albumin is lost in the urine the patient's oncotic pressure decreases the fluid will shift from the intravascular compartment to the interstitial compartment so there will be a relative hypovolemia that means the fluid is there in the body but it's not there in the blood vessels so the body senses as if there is no water in the blood vessels so the kidneys tend to retain more and more of salt and water which further worsens the edema so this is a case with nephrotic patients second thing is the patients who are suffering from reduced glomerular filtration rate or chronic kidney disease as the glomerular filtration rate decreases as the functioning nephron mass decreases there will be increase in the single nephron glomerular filtration rate so just take an example if you take a factory where around 50 workers are functioning suppose 10 workers they became sick and suddenly now there are only 40 workers in order to maintain the output of the factory this 40 workers they will work for more number of hours in order to maintain the output of the factory so that means although the number of the workers is less they will tend to maintain the same output of the factory over a period of time they will develop a state of fatigueness so ultimately the output of the factory will decrease so in the same manner as the functioning number of nephrons decrease in a patient who is suffering from chronic kidney disease as the chronic kidney disease stage progresses the number of available nephrons they will tend to hyperfiltrate over a period of time they will also enter into a state of senescence so the kidney will no longer be in a position to excrete the sodium and water so this leads to a slow retention of sodium and water as the chronic kidney disease progresses so this tends to development of pedal edema periorbital puffiness and ultimately development of pulmonary edema as the patient enters into chronic kidney disease stage 5 so how do we treat this edema this edema can be treated in various ways for example if the patient is suffering from proteinuria we can increase his serum albumin levels by increasing his protein in his diet or by prescribing some medications which can stop the leakage of albumin from his or her kidneys the third thing is restriction of the fluid and restriction of salt we usually advise patient to limit his or her fluid intake to 1.5 liters or less than 1 liter if his fluid overload state is very severe 
We also advise the patient to limit his salt intake to four to six grams per day or even less than that. And sometimes we advise the patient to apply stockings to his lower limbs during the daytime. And sometimes we advise the patient to elevate his or her limbs for 20 to 30 minutes, five to six times a day. And most importantly, apart from these kind of measures like restriction of fluid intake, restriction of salt intake, and increasing in the protein intake and, and uh, stockings, this limb elevation, the most important form of therapy, which we commonly prescribe is a diuretic. Diuretics can be commonly uh, described under two categories, depending upon their site of action. The thiazide type of diuretics or, and the loop diuretics. Depending upon their site of action at various levels in the renal tubule. So, the loop diuretics are the most powerful diuretics. And most importantly, as the chronic kidney disease progresses from one stage to another, the thiazide diuretics they are not found to be that efficacious when compared to loop diuretics. However, the loop diuretics should be used cautiously. They should be used under strict medical supervision. And most importantly, the salt intake and fluid intake should be restricted whenever a patient is prescribed on diuretics. Sometimes when a diuretic is initiated, because of the over-aggressive diuresis, sometimes the patients may develop symptoms like dizziness, lightheadedness, and sometimes an acute worsening of his or her renal function. And they can be avoided whenever a slow titration of diuretic dose is planned. And most importantly, long term uses of diuretics may lead to a state of diuretic resistance and electrolyte abnormalities like hyponatremia, hypokalemia, hypomagnesemia. So they should be followed regularly whenever a patient is on diuretic. So the best advice for patients is you should not take diuretic on your own. They should be prescribed by you are treating doctor or a nephrologist and you should have periodical checkup and blood tests as advised by your physician. And even when diuretics are not acting, then we may have to initiate a patient of chronic kidney disease on dialysis. So during dialysis, we will tend to remove the extra fluid and we will remove the uremic toxins in the dialysis, during the process of dialysis. So this is called ultrafiltration, which we tend to remove the extracellular water. And dialysis is a process whereby the uremic toxins are also removed. So with this, I will tend to conclude my discussion on this top, on topic of diuretics. And I hope uh, you have acquired a basic knowledge about the uses of diuretics, their use, their side effects, especially in the setting of chronic kidney disease. Thank you.